Determinants and Kramer's Rule. So now that we have learned everything that we need to know about finding determinants of two by two or three by three matrices, the question is, is how do they help us? What good are they for? Well, we did learn that we could take determinants of a two by two matrix and that gives us an inverse. So that's useful there, but how else can it be useful? Um, and this is a good time to note that determinants of a three by three matrix will not help you find the inverse of a three by three matrix. So this trick only works with two by two matrices. Okay, well, determinants are useful in helping us solve systems of equations. So we've seen these types of systems of equations throughout this whole chapter. That's what the chapter has been discussing. Determinants and Kramer's rule are just another way to solve these systems of equations. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to find the determinant of your coefficients over here on the left, a1, a2, b1, b2, and that just gives you d, the determinant. Then, if you take that same matrix, that same determinant, and you take out the A column, but replace it with your answer column, that's going to give you the determinant using the X variable, so D sub X. Same thing with the D sub Y. Replace your Y variables with your answers, and that will give you another determinant. So then, you do D sub X divided by D, so you divide those two determinants to give you your X coordinate, and you do D sub Y divided by D, divide those two determinants to give you your Y coordinate, and that's going to give you your ordered pair or your solution to that equation, X and Y. So let's go ahead and try and do this with an example. So I have a system of equations here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to find D, which is the determinant using my coefficients, 2, 5, 5, negative 2. Remember the determinants of a 2 by 2 matrix are very easy. We take 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4, and subtract 5 times 5, so 25. So D gives me negative 29. If I want to find d sub x, I take out my x variables and I replace it with my answers. So that's going to be 7, negative 3, keep my y variables the same, 5, negative 2, and calculate the determinant of that. So 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, minus negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Always watch those negatives. So that gives me a 1. And then d sub y is taking out the y variables here, the y coefficients, and plugging them in with the answers. So my x's stay the same, 2, 5, and my answer is 7, negative 3. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, minus 5 times 7, which is 35. Mm -hmm. And so if I add those together, that gives me negative 41. Now remember, my x coordinate is d sub x divided by d, which is 1 divided by negative 29. And my y coordinate is d sub y divided by d. And so that gives me negative 41 over negative 29. Reduce the negatives, which gives me positive 41 over 29. Now most of the time when I ask for answers in a system of equations, I ask for them in ordered pair format, so don't forget to do that step. So my answer would be negative 1 over 29 and 41 over 29. And I would encourage you to use a graphing calculator to go ahead and check the solution that you found to this system of equations. Okay, now Kramer's rule doesn't only work for just 2 by 2s. It also works for 3 by 3s and anything larger. So we can always use Kramer's rule, but of course the more higher of matrix that you have, the more difficult it becomes to compute your determinant. Okay, so the formula I have it all written out here, but you can see that it looks exactly the same. The D matrix is just using your coefficients. The D sub X takes out your X coefficients, puts in the answers. The D sub Y takes out the Y coefficients, puts in your answers. And the D sub Z takes out the Z coefficients and puts in your answers. And then you just divide them just the way that we did in the last time. And that will give you your coordinates X, Y, and Z for the system of equations that you're trying to solve. 
All right, so we see this example here. So we know the very first thing that we need to do is take the determinant of just using our coefficients. So I have 1, negative 3, 7, 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 2, 3. Um, now to take the determinant of this 3 by 3, I can expand upon any row or any column, or as I told you before, my preference is the diagonal method. So I'm going to copy down my first two columns, 1, 1, 1, negative 3, 1, negative 2, and draw my diagonals and do my multiplication. So 1 times 1 times 3 is 3, negative 3, 1, 1 is negative 3, 7 times 1 times negative 2 is negative 14. If I were to add these, my 3 minus 3 cancels out and that gives me negative 14. Now my other direction, 1 times 1 times 7 is 7, negative 2, 1, 1 is negative 2, 3, 1, negative 3 is negative 9. So if I add these, 7 minus 2 is 5, 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So my determinant of D is to take my bottom minus my top. Again, be very careful of those negatives. And so my determinant of this guy here is negative 10. Now, I always encourage you to check these as you're doing them, so that way any mistake that you make here doesn't affect any following work that you do past this. So I went to my website and I just typed in my matrix here. So notice my matrix A was the exact same thing that I had of my coefficient matrix there. And then when you click the determinant A button, it gave out my answer, determinant A is negative 10. So I've got that one correct. Okay, now I have to do these determinants three more times. One for X, one for Y, one for Z. All right, so now I need to compute D sub X where I take out my X columns and I put it in with my answers. So I put in 13, 1, 4. My other columns stay the same. 13, 1, negative 2, 7, 1, 3. Again, I'm going to do the diagonal method. That's my preferred method. So I'm going to copy down my two rows, first two rows over here. All right, draw my diagonals, do some multiplication. Um, again, it is a little bit better for this one to make sure to keep everything nice and neatly lined up so that way we don't make any mistakes in this here. So 13, 1, 3 gives me 39. Negative 3, 1, 4 gives me negative 12. 7, 1, negative 2 should be negative 14. And if I take 39 minus 12 minus 14, that gives me 13 down here. The other direction, 4 times 1 times 7 is 28. Negative 2 times 1 times 3 is negative 26. And 3, 1, negative 3 is negative 9. So 28 minus 26 is 2. 2 minus 9 is negative 7. So my D sub X is 13 minus a negative 7. So it gives me 13 plus 7. So my D sub X is equal to 20. Okay, again, I encourage you to check this so that way we don't make any following mistakes depending upon any mistakes that we would make at this point. So if we go back to my website, notice that I have replaced my first column with my answers here, and I clicked the determinant A button. It did do some rounding errors, but notice that if we were to round this, that would give us the whole number of 20. So that gives us confirmation that we have this one correct. Okay, so now let's do D sub Y. And that goes back to starting with my original coefficient matrix. So starting with this one here and replacing my Y's. So my X's stay the same. My Y's now become 13, 1, 4. Oops. And then my Z's, they stay the same, 7, 1, 3. All right, copying down my first two columns and working my diagonals here. So it gives me 3, 13, and 28. If I add these, that gives me 16 plus 28, which gives me 44. On the top, I have 7, 4, and 39. So that gives me 11 plus 39, which is 50. And if I take the bottom 
minus my top, that gives me negative 6. So let's go ahead and confirm that I have this one correct. Now I need to go back to my first column and put in the original of 1, 1, 1, and my second column was 13, 1, and 4, if I recall it correctly. Let's go ahead and click my determinant A, and I found the determinant A is negative 6, which is exactly what I've got, so we're good so far. All right, one more determinant, and then that will give us our final answer here when I do some simple division. D sub Z, go back to my original coefficient matrix, Keep the x's and the y's the same, and replace my z's with those answers there. All right, I'm going to copy down my first two rows and do some diagonal work. So I have 4, negative 3, negative 26, so that gives me negative 25 down here, 13, negative 2, negative 12. So that gives me 11 minus 12, which is negative 1. So D sub Z is negative 25 minus a negative 1 or plus 1. So D sub Z is equal to negative 24. And let's go ahead and check that too. So let's see, my middle column should be negative 3, 1, 2. Negative 3, 1, 2. And my last column should be the 13, 1, 4. It should be a negative 2 down here. All right, so I did get the determinant to be negative 24. Okay, so to come up with my answers, I just need to do this simple division. All right, so my x is d sub x divided by d. So that gives me 20 divided by a negative 10, which gives me negative 2. My y should be negative 6 divided by my negative 10, which reduces by 2, so that'd be 3 fifths. And my z is negative 24 divided by negative 10. Reduce those by 2, so that gives me 12 over 5. So my ordered triple answer should be negative 2, 3 fifths, 12 fifths. Now, we only have chances to make little division errors here, reduction errors, because we did check our other work along the way. But I would also encourage you to check this answer using um, either your graphing calculator or some other system. All right, so we have finished up how to solve equations by using Kramer's rule. Now I want to do one other quick little review before we ended this section, and that is how we can solve systems of equations because we've learned lots of ways, basically a new way each section of this chapter. Um, the first section discussed how to graph it to check, and that's very easy using a graphing calculator when you only have a two by two system of equation. Um, we know that we didn't like to use that um, to to do our work, but that was okay to help check it because sometimes answers don't come up as precisely as we like. Okay, in the first section we learned substitution or elimination method. In the second section we learned the matrix method, which is row reduce echelon form, or I always say RREF, which also helps us find the inverse of matrices. Um, in the last section, we learned the inverse matrix method. So we take the inverse of our coefficient matrix and we multiply it by our answer matrix. And then in this method here, we just learned Kramer's rule by utilizing determinants. 
So you can do any one of these methods to solve a system of equations. Remember, if you use one system of equations and you do it a couple of different ways, you should always get the exact same answer because you're always solving the exact same system of equations. All right, so that's it, and that finishes up our linear algebra unit.